been inside this building. Have never, never been inside this building. But every time you eat out, but every, every time, time you eat out, out the Richmond Prepared Meals Tax, the Richmond Prepared Meals Tax goes to fund this organization. Goes to fund this organization. In 2009, in 2009, the people raised, the people raised 25 million dollars. 25 million dollars. This money, this money is supposed to go towards, is supposed to go towards arts and education. Arts and education. Arts and education for who? Arts and education for who? When 75 percent, when 75 percent of Richmond public school students, of Richmond public school students live below the poverty line, live below the poverty line. We are cutting, we are cutting 50 million dollars, 50 million dollars to Richmond's public schools, to Richmond's public schools. Why are we paying? Why are we paying for a building? For a building. Most of us, most of us can't afford to go to. Can't afford to go to. We're going left. We're going left. Yeah, that's right. We're going left. <laughs>
safe, Paul. The budget has to be balanced. So guess who's back? So guess who's back? The governor wants to balance the budget on. The governor wants to balance the budget on. He wants to lay off state workers. He wants to lay off state workers. Free state worker salaries. Free state worker salaries. Free state worker salaries. For public education. Reduce support, support for public education. But he will not. But he will not. the budget. Cut the budget. For the prisons. For the prisons. He will not. He will not. Cut the budget. Cut the budget. For the police. For the police. He won't even close down. He won't even close down. The one city, the one state agency. The one state agency. That promotes state trade. That promotes state trade. In a particular country. In a particular country. And that is. And that is the Virginia Israel Advisory Board. The Virginia Israel Advisory Board. They won't even cut. They won't, they won't even cut the money, the state money that goes to support. The state the money that goes to support the cleaning up. The cleaning up. up the Robert E. Lee statue on Monument Avenue. The Robert E. Lee statue on Monument Avenue. We say no. We say no. We say no. We say no. Don't balance the budget. Don't balance the budget. On the backs of Virginia workers! Come out January 14th! Come out January 14th! For the Virginia People's Assembly! For the Virginia People's Assembly! And march back here! And march back here! In the hundreds! In the hundreds! And force that demand! And force that demand! that has formed by these banks turning into corporate entities <laughs> by absorbing all these other smaller independent banks that were just isolated to individual states. But I'm not against corporations either. They have the right to make the money they want. It's natural selection. It's survival of the fittest. They have the right to make the money they make as long as they abide by the principles of the marketing concept, which includes Focusing on consumer wants and needs to distinguish products from competitors' offerings, and integrating all the organization's activities to satisfy to satisfy these wants, and and most importantly, achieving the organization's long-term goals by satisfying customer wants and needs legally and responsibly. Right. So why are we here? Because they are not saving our money. Right. They are not meeting our wants and needs, and they are yep. not doing business legally and responsibly. Yep. Correct. So you need to be. Excuse me. So you may be asking, how did this all happen? It happened by the deregulation of banks right. in the past three decades, starting in the 1980s through the early 2000s. Correct. Fact check. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all because of the Great Depression and the regulations that were instituted post Great Depression to help control the banking system and stop the reckless investing and spending of people's money. Correct. So that's where you get the Glass-Steagall Act, which is implemented in 1933. Passed in 1933 in response to the Great Depression, the Glass-Steagall Act separated investment, insurance, and commercial banking activities. Prior to the Great Depression, banks were able to use depositors' money to buy stocks as well as other investment activities. Banks became greedy, taking part in increasingly risky activities. When the stock market crashed in 1929, 
so did the banks because much of their depositors' money was invested in stocks. So you have this period of regulation up pretty much until the 1960s. And it was great. Banks were doing their job. There were thousands of individual banks. About, um, let me check real quick. There was about... Um, 12,000. Yes, 12 to 13,000 individual banks in the United States. But that all started to dissipate as soon as deregula deregulation began in the 1980s. Bring it back! Starting with the Depository Institution Deregulation, deregulation and Monetary Control Act of 1980. This act invalidated all limitations on the rates of interest which are payable on depositor on accounts. It also authorized the transaction of these interest bearing <laughs> accounts. Hence, banks selling off people's mortgages to investment firms so they don't have to wait for the uh, mortgages to mature over the life of the mortgage. Before the deregulation, mortgages were amortized, meaning they paid individual installments over the life of the loan, which is usually 30 years. And after that, these banks would just sell them off without thinking of the backlash or exactly who was qualified to get these loans in the first place. So then came the mortgage crisis, which happened mostly due to the biggest piece of deregulation financially in our history, which was the graham leach Bali Act. Widely accepted as the main cause of the financial crisis, the graham leach Bali Act tore down all barriers between investment firms, commercial banks, and insurance companies, allowing them to merge and take part in each other's business practices. It also limited private protections against the closure of personal financial information. This act repealed what was left of the graham leach Bali Act, which really protected the consumers. So you may be asking, what exactly were the activities that these banks were doing that was so illegal and so wrong. Mostly it was this predatory lending where they would mislead just about anybody they could who wanted a mortgage into getting a mortgage and then ending up getting ridiculous balloon payments which they could have no possibility of affording and then end up defaulting on the mortgages. And this happened on a mass scale, hence the whole mortgage crisis. Hello, excuse me. Hello. Hi there, how are you? Hey, hello. Of some of these Mike check! Mike check! We're not going anywhere! We're not going anywhere! I'm just gonna skip forward to some of the grievances that we have with Bank of America. Bank of America hasn't changed its fraudulent practice since the financial crisis. They are failing to, to disclose essential information to borrowers, misleading them into signing a mortgage they are unable to pay off. Bank of America has also manipulated person, person financial estimation justified doing all these mortgages. In recent years, Bank, of, Bank of America was <laughs> accused of raising interest rates for absolutely no reason, no justifiable reason. This isn't quite as major, like I said, they have the right to make their money, but it's absolutely ridiculous. And Bank of America, who owns over $72 trillion in derivatives bets, just is greedy enough to charge its constituents whatever they think is you know, within their legal right. Bank of America claimed to its shareholders and customers that Bank of America Merrill Lynch merger was one of the steadily foundation. However, within the first quarter of acquisition of Bank of America, it posted a $15.4 billion loss. So once again, lying to the constituents and basically trying to get as much money as possible through the derivatives market that Merrill Lynch had such a great stake in. And this is the biggest right, the greatest grievance I have with Bank of America. Tell it! Bank of America has moved $75 trillion in derivatives bets from Merrill Lynch to a subsidiary insured by the FDIC, which basically means they're taking that $75 trillion in debt and moving it and placing the burden on people's savings accounts. Because the FDIC was put in place to insure up to $200,000 of your savings. So basically, Bank of America said, screw that. If these derivatives bets turn toxic, we're taking your money to pay off our debts. $75 trillion of it. And also, I'm sure you're all familiar with the TARP bailouts. The $640 million was allocated to the top five financial institutions in this country, banks and, finance and investing firms. Well, since then, there's been over $7 trillion in unsupervised loans given out to these same financial institutions. $1.2 trillion from going to Bank of America alone. And Merrill Lynch, now part of Bank of America, gave 22 times more bailout money to any other single company to bonus executives. We Google Index of $3.6 billion was given an executive directly from the bailout. Hang on the so you're asking, like, what exactly can we do about this? Hang on the <laughs> we must act. Woo! Woo! 
no legislation and know what as well as who you are voting for. For example, Elizabeth Warren, who is now running for senator and who's now running for senator of Massachusetts, who is now who is trying to establish a consumer watchdog agency, which would protect people from these predatory loans and these predatory lending practices. Move money out of the banks and into a credit union. That's right. But not all banks are bad. Do your research. Basically, tarp funded rep tarp fund recipients are gu guilty as charged. So keep away from Citibank, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, all those investment firms. Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo. Yeah. And I think most importantly, share what you know. Help create a more educated society and transparent marketplace. And all this power, don't let them take advantage of you. We are the fuel for their business. They rely on us for the money they make. They've been guzzling our money and will continue to until we either cut off their fuel supply or convict them of their crimes and we install sensible and fair regulation. That's it. Woo! Yeah! I want my money back! Thanks God failed out. We got sold out! Of Dominion. 
Eric Cantor is the largest recipient of Dominion. Dominion lobbied with $1.7 million in 2010. Dominion lobbied with $1.7 million in 2010. And $2.1 million in 2009. And $2.1 million in 2009. New laws allow state governments to regulate the costs. <coughs> New, New laws, laws allow state governments to regulate the costs. Cost. Dominion charges people for electricity. Dominion, Dominion charges people, people for electricity. electricity. Uses that money to lobby politicians. Uses Using that, that money to lobby politicians. politicians. And raise the rates. And and raise, raise the rates. rates. This is Dominion. This, this is, is Dominion. Dominion. Yesterday, yesterday, uh, started to block, started to block the Congressional Insider Trading Act. The Congressional Insider Trading Act brought to the House, brought to the House, House by a fellow Republican of his, by a fellow Republican of his, to stop insider trading, to stop insider trading in Congress, in Congress, because they can make regulations, because they can make regulations that change the market. And change the market and make a lot of money on it and make a lot of money on it and they do statistically statistically it's been studied it's been studied the portfolios the portfolios of congress people of congress people way outperform way outperform average americans average americans Though this has been known for a long time though this has been known for a long time and this act has been being tried to be passed, and this act is being tried to be passed for six years. For six years, it hasn't made headway till now. It hasn't made headway till now. Due to good press. Due to good press. Partly because of all the stuff we're doing. Partly because of all the stuff we're doing. And it was looking really good to pass. It was looking really good to pass. But Ant but Cantor has just stalled it. But Cantor has just stalled it. Trying to send it back to committee. Trying to send it back to committee. And if it holds over till next year. And if it holds over till next year. When election stuff becomes big. When election stuff becomes big. It's gonna die. It's gonna die. So that's just a little insight. So that's, that's just, just a little, little insight. insight into how cancer, into how cancer, and a lot of people, and a lot of people make a lot of money, make a lot of money, and want to keep making a lot of money, and want to keep, keep making a lot, a lot of money, money on the backs of Americans, on the backs of Americans through policies they enact, through policies they enact. Woo! 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 Thank you for coming. Boo to cancer! Boo to cancer! Boo to cancer!